fucking moron! Hey! Moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the Woo Water Boy, duh! You know, game days are special to me. Game days have always been special to me. And here we are. We have 18 regular season special days. 18. This is number three. And each week, your team has the opportunity to prove that they are one of those teams that should have the chance to hold up the ultimate prize in football. Cowboys sucked ass yesterday. They were terrible. They were an abomination. They literally had the Cowboys greats roll over in their grave in the performance that we had. But I do have good news with the Dallas Cowboys. One thing that you have to look at is that under Mike McCarthy, you may not like Mike McCarthy. You think that maybe he just fell off the salad truck, that he is not the guy, he's not good, whatever. I I get it, I get it, I get it. But you have to understand something. We may not have won back-to-back Super Bowls since the 90s, but we don't have too many back-to-back losses. Under Mike McCarthy, the Dallas Cowboys are 12-2 and after a loss. They're tied with Baltimore since 2021 of that. That's actually remarkable that you don't get on losing streaks. Whatever it is they do, whatever it is they do, they figure it out the next week. And we're going to learn a lot about this year's Dallas Cowboys team. We have flaws, and they're flaws of our own making where we have an owner that's short-sighted in looking at talent and wanting to make sure that he does not bring in extra players that are expensive. Right now, you have to say the move of Jordan Phillips, trading a a draft pick for him at the moment, looks like a Don Terry Poe signing, that we're repeating that kind of thing. Instead of bringing in a stud to help us in the defense where we know we have had problems forever, just is. At the moment, you have to look at our running game and say, we're not real good. After being 14th last year, which we looked at and said, that's not good enough. We're about 25th right now. And that's another case of the owner being short-sighted and handicapping us. But the reality is, every team has flaws, fatal flaws, things that you look at, injuries and so on. At the moment, our flaws may not be worse than anybody else's. But the team has to perform at its maximum capability. And that wasn't last week. Now, that kind of loss is the kind of loss that can start shit rolling downhill, start getting people pointing fingers, start problems in the locker room that carry on beyond the talent that you have in your ability. And this is one of those opportunities where they can right the ship. And I think that they do right the ship on this day. I think the Cowboys are chomping at the bit that they want to get back out there and prove themselves after a disappointment. The thing that's always funny to me, because I remember thinking about that game yesterday, you know, last week, I didn't say anything about it. But I kept looking at all of the pregame shows, and every single one of them had a star, 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 star for who was going to win that game. And in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, shit. Everybody's picking the Cowboys. And for whatever reason, that's when the Dallas Cowboys seem to not show up. I don't know why. But that's what happens. That's what happened with Green Bay. 
everybody figured the Cowboys just show up, they're going to get the win, and everything's going to be hunky-dory. And it ended up being we were ass-ass in that game. And that was the New Orleans game. Everybody said, well, they just beat up on Carolina. Carolina's just an awful team, and they're really not that good. Derek Carr is a bum. I said it. I've said it. And lo and behold, they kicked our teeth in. They beat us down on our own turf. So what kind of team are we going to be? Are we going to be one? Or are we going to go ahead and get up off the mat and be about something? Now, this game, you've got MVP versus MVP. We know Lamar Jackson is two-time MVP. And this is an opportunity for Dak Prescott to take a claim at this head-to-head. Everybody will be watching. It's a 425 kickoff. And I want to see my quarterback who, if we get this victory, it's going to be on our quarterback. We're going to need to go ahead and see him sling the rock because our running game isn't effective. Sadly, I, I want you to think about this for a second. Our success rate in running the football is 37%. That's pathetic. That means one time out of three, we get positive yards. One time out of three, we get positive yards. Cowboys are one-dimensional. And it's all on Dak Prescott. It is on Dak Prescott. No ifs, ands, or buts. He got the the 60-burger contract a year. He's going to have to earn it. And at the moment, he's got one really good target and another one that's coming off of injury. He's going to have to make biscuits out of buttermilk. Can he do it? I think he can. And the way we get the win here against Baltimore, Baltimore's offensive line is not great. They like to run the football. Derrick Henry probably has a chip on his shoulder because he's probably upset that he's in Baltimore eating crab cakes instead of being at his house in Dallas eating steak and probably wants to show the Cowboys, hey, here's what you missed on. You could have had me there where you have problems with your running game. But the way the Cowboys can negate this and help out their defense is by scoring points, scoring early, scoring often, and make the Ravens have to pass the football where they don't have great weapons to throw to. And that's my take on where we need to be on this game. Emmett Smith has some choice words for the Cowboys, and his thought on the running game is, We're just not doing enough of it. Let's listen to Emmett Smith. You know, we got a lot to do here before our one o'clock kickoff of the Eagles um, going against the same New Orleans Saints. So we'll be live streaming uh, starting at one o'clock, actually 1245. Uh, We'll be here with the gang. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have a crab cake sub today and Joe Boo wings, of course, and uh, glizzies. Let's listen to Emmett Smith on his take. I would say the the inability to stop the run. Like you said, Aaron Jones ran all over us and ran us out of the playoff. And then the Saints come in and, Mar- and, and Alvin Kamara comes in and run all over us as well. And we don't stop the run. So our inability to stop the run uh, is a major problem. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's just tough. Um, uh, but the good thing about the National Football League, you have another week to come back out and bounce back. It's not going to be easy going up against Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as you said, Derrick Henry <laughs> coming into town. Derrick Henry is probably licking his chops right about now because of what they did last, what we gave up last week. So we're going to have to gain, we want to get our pride back because I think the Saints came in and, and took something from us. And now we got to fight like hell to get it back. Mm-hmm. Can that be a good thing? Are they that mad? Like, is that how do you get your pride back, Emmett? Well, one, we got to figure out how to how to we got to get back to the basics. Run fit. 
We got to run fit. And, and, and defense have to have to stay in the gaps. You cannot open up run lanes like you did last oh, week against terrible. the Saints. I mean, you absolutely got to do exactly what coaches have taught you to do. And certain in, 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 in Zimmer's scheme, if you're supposed to be in a gap, you need to be in that gap. And if you're not in that gap, you're going to create running lanes that you've seen the Saints just run through last week. And you don't want that to happen this week with Derrick Henry because secondary guys do not want to tackle Derrick Henry by themselves. It's going to be a problem. It's mm -hmm. going to be a problem. Are you do you think the Cowboys pull this one off or no? I hope so. I you hope so. At the game. Oh. I got a buddy of mine, a partner of mine that's a – uh, that's a Baltimore Ravens fan, and so he's <laughs> coming to town. And so it's going to be love-hate this weekend, no doubt. And I'm praying that my Cowboys pull it together and we pull off, enough, pull off a victory. I love that. It's not just stopping the run that seems to be the issue. we got to talk about this rushing attack with the Cowboys. 68 rushing yards total in the Saints game, 170 total on the early season. How many attempts, though? How many attempts did it's we good, have? It's a good question, yeah. Well, what do you no, think 16, of that? 68 may be the total number, but the attempts also is important. If we had okay. 20 attempts and we rushed for 68 yards, that's a problem. And don't forget, also sacks yeah. count against the rushing stats. It's 21 attempts. All right, that's bad. Okay, there you my go. Whole that's, that's, my whole that's, control room just started laughing. That, that's real bad. So how many of those belongs to the quarterback? How many? They're, they're looking it up for you. But they yeah. said so, two. Uh, Two belongs to the quarterback. Oh, that's real bad. Okay. That's not a good look. Okay. That's not a good that's look. That's not What's a good look. They could Thank you. They Dalvin Cook from the practice squad for this game against well, the Ravens. Now you sound like you're panicking. You sound like, you, you sound like you, you're against what Zeke is doing. You're against what uh, Dallow is doing. And at the end of the day, the Saints has a very good run defense. Period. Yeah. And what I love about what the Saints did and this this goes unnoticed as well. The mm. Saints played their players during the preseason. They played their players a lot. So physically fit and physically ready to go, and and they're rolling. Our team, you know, we didn't quite do it that way because we set stars, we set guys. We didn't go into the game at that level, and that could be a problem as well. So the Saints are a very good defense and very good offensive unit right now. And you, mm -hmm. you saw it. Full throttle. But that can and change it yeah. real yeah, quick. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, the Steelers did the sort of same thing. You're, it's a great – it's why I love talking to you because you're, you're dead on about being game ready. You're not worried about Zeke. Zeke, six attempts for 16 yards. There's no we, – we don't have a concern about the rushing attack. It's, that's huge. Cowboys fans want to hear that. Yeah. I, I don't have a concern. I mean, what I have, I do. my concern is the commitment to doing it and doing it on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest concern. Um, and um, and getting, Dak, getting somebody down the field, having somebody have, come out and run a 4-2, get blow the top of the defense wide open, go down the field a little bit more. Uh, we didn't do hardly any of that this past week. We tried a couple of times. We probably got one or two of those completions. But – yeah. We need some more explosive plays down the field. Yeah, do you think there's pressure on Dak to sort of give him, get him the ball more now that he's paid? Is there is like something like that going on now? Well, that's the expectation. Anytime you pay somebody money, you expect them to go out yeah. and just tear it up. And if they don't, then you everybody in the world feel like you overpaid somebody. There's a lot of overpaid football players in the National Football League. <laughs> Everybody's not performing. Matter of fact, they need to take some of that salary. They all need to perform. Some of these guys and just pass that on over to me since I've already proven that I can run. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I, and that's how I look at it. We have a bunch of overpaid players for for the performances. You're not saying, that are, you, you're not, are you saying Dak's overpaid? Let's be clear. I never said a name. Okay, good. Making sure. I never said a name. And I wasn't just talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. So. <laughs> I'm just talking about, I said, cross the league. Okay. And I have never said any particular team. Uh, and so Ooh. there are quarterbacks that are overpaid. There are running backs that are overpaid. There's wide receivers overpaid. There's tight ends overpaid. There's defensive players that's overpaid. <laughs> there's a lot of overpaid players, period. Wow, <laughs> clean it up now, Emmett. Um, how many yards could you get out there today, Emmett? Not one yard. Stop. You really Not think one. so? 
I might pull a hamstring coming out of my stands. No. <laughs> I love how you think you need more money. Every like I, like I saw you at Super Bowl. I don't know who wasn't giving you a check Super Bowl week. I was like, what are we doing? I don't even know which of the list of things you get paid to talk about we're talking about today, which is amazing and, and you're so amazing to talk to. When I did see you at Super Bowl, you were surprised that McCarthy came back, that Jerry brought him back. But you said that you were excited to see, okay, let's evolve. How are you going to evolve given this opportunity? Mm -hmm. What is the Emmett Smith evaluation of his evolution two weeks in? He don't like McCarthy at all. I would just say we played a solid defense in Cleveland, a solid defensive front that gave us or afforded us the opportunity to work not only on our pass blocking, but also work on our run game. In that first half, I thought we did, and I thought the play calling was excellent. Because um, we kept the Browns' defense off balance. Second half, not so good. And I've seen that happen throughout uh, Mike McCarthy's tenure. We, 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 we either going to hit and hit it on all cylinders, or we're going to hit and miss and hit and miss here and there. Um, I'm not sure. Last week was just a debacle. It's just was it a was debacle, just ugly. I, yeah, that's one of the things we forget. didn't didn't rise up like we should have, and maybe we don't have that talented of a football team to rise up <laughs> and do what, what people expect. Um, we do have a few injuries here and there, but bottom line is, uh, next man up. And right now, I feel like some of our players, whether it's be on the offensive side or uh, even on the defensive front, uh, we could be playing with some, what I would call back in the day, playing B and playing C guys. Hmm. Um, um, so McCarthy, um, he has his work cut out for him. Uh, it, Mike Zimmer has his work cut out for him as well. Is this a playoff team? Not the way they looked last week. <laughs> Not the way they looked last week. I love talking to you. Uh, let's get let's get to why you're here. This is incredible. Uh, September Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. You're always doing the best to get people educated about things they should be thinking about in the craziness of their everyday lives. People don't stop. They don't self-care. They don't think about it. You're teaming up with Depend, and you're raising right. awareness for this month for this really important cause that affects a lot of people. Yeah, because September is the Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, and we are uh, teaming up with Depend to try to help men understand that there's a way and a methodology around staying healthy and going in and getting your prostate check or getting the prostate screening is easier today because you could do it through blood tests. Um, and I'm trying to encourage guys to stay on top of their health. Amen. Uh, because as an athlete, that's what keeps us on the football field mm -hmm. is our health. And as a man, that's what keeps you in the game with family and being around for the kids when we are on top of our health. There are other things that are out of our control. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we can control is, number one, how we take care of our body. Amen. So if you got uh, your primary position, make sure that you're going in and getting screened every year uh, just so you establish the right base. And just in case something gets out of, uh, out of normal, uh, that you understand where you once were to where you are today and what could be going on and give yourself a chance to get it corrected because knowing when something is changing gives you the ability to get it corrected so it doesn't become a bigger issue down the road. And oftentimes people stick their head in the sand, don't want to know information, but the more information that you have in your body, the better decisions that you're able to make and the better decision you're able to make, um, the more comfortable you become and the more you're, you put yourself in a position to be around for your family. You said it. Give yourself Amen. the chance. Give yourself the opportunity to fix it if something's wrong. That's that's huge. Yes. And it's preventative, and it's amazing that you're saying that. I hope. I mean, when Emmett, Emmett talks, everybody listens. Everybody. Go Emmett talks. Everybody listens. Well, apparently Jared Jones isn't listening because, you know, Emmett started out this conversation like, oh, no, they're just not running the ball enough. She's like, well, they're running like 21 times a game and it's uh, 2.9 yards per run. Yeah, well, you know, sacks are part of that, too. How many of them are Dak Prescott? Well, only two runs are Dak's. Oh, that's really bad. 
So, yeah, we had Emmett towing the company line that, oh, no, we just need to do it more. We just need to do it more. I'm sorry. Your success rate of getting positive yards is 37%. And that's not getting five, six, seven, eight yards, guys. That's not. That could be a half a yard is considered a success. And you're averaging 2.9 yards, or sorry, 2.7 yards per carry. Bro, you're not going to win if you're going to run the ball uh, like that. We have got to do much, much better. We've started out the season um, poorly in the running game. The reality is some of this is we have two rookie offensive linemen that are starting out, and they're getting their feet wet. And we have now, of course, different running backs that are getting playing time as well. So hopefully this will turn around. But in the meantime, you're going to have to rely on Dak Prescott's arm. Dak has talked about running the football more. Um, I think that I can't remember the number of games, but when Dak has had five or more rushes in a game, it's another one of those statistics. It's kind of crazy, but they end up winning more times than not. We'll see what we're going to see, and I will see you guys here 1245 as we get ready for the Eagles to take on, wow, the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans and roll right into the Cowboys game at 425. I'll see you there.